Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to Teaching for the Culture. And this is your host, Bianca Goolsby. And I am so excited because I want to introduce a new community partner that we have with Teaching for the Culture. So I want to go ahead and turn it over to my special guest so she can introduce herself and her vision for her organization. Hello, everyone. My name is Sade Duffy. And I am currently a library media specialist in Hillsborough County. And I decided to create my own brand per se, my own company called Culturally Bias LLC. And it kind of goes off of the term cultural bias. You know, when you think about how even our educational system is structured with standardized testing or everyday life, we have cultural bias. The whole world in America is seen through the white eye. And sometimes we need to see the world through our own eyes and through our own people. And we need to touch um, our own communities. And I remember at the beginning of this year, um, hearing something from my own principal at my school about, you know, everybody wants to save the world, but why not just start right here in your own community, right in front of you? There's so much you can do, so much impact you can make. So that is my purpose of creating culturally bias to impact our community and use our resources and our knowledge and our views to kind of shape um, an idea that we can hold on to and, and something that can belong to us and we can find different ways to impact the community. And I think that is so awesome. And it was so interesting. And I love the way that we connected on an episode um, that I was doing in regards of talking about reading books at barbershops. And yeah. I'm so glad that we connected. And I would like for you to tell the audience about that initiative. Um, yes, it was literally, I'm sitting here watching morning tea and allegations and you start talking about um, the barbershops and the reading. And I had already created this idea called Boys, Books, and Barbers. And I said, oh my God, this is the sign I've been looking for. Somebody saying we need this. And honestly, I had got a lot of books and things before the COVID pandemic started and barbershops closed and everything was closing literally the week after I was like getting all my materials together to start doing this around spring break. And so I, I kind of just halted it and just sat back and didn't do much with it. But your show and your conversation sparked my motivation again. And I said, this is what I needed. Somebody to just say, yes, go ahead and do this. And so I created Boys, Books and Barbers to get culturally um, stimulating literature, quality literature that is free from stereotypes that we do find a lot in the libraries. Um, not only just public libraries, but in our schools too. And being a library media specialist and even getting my master's degree, I went back and studied multicultural literature and the effect that that had on students of minorities and how that helps them even comprehend better when they see literature that looks more like them, that feels better, that's culturally relevant, that they can connect to. So my goal is you know, pinpointing the black community, pinpointing young black boys, my own son included, he's going to sixth grade and to get him to read a book is very hard just to enjoy reading it. He's a good reader, he's on level, he's very successful in school, but reading for enjoyment is something that I cannot get him to do. And so this is something that has motivated me to go in this direction and say, I'm gonna find a way, even if they're only reading for twice a month in a barber shop, in a chair, but they're gonna see that book. They might see that book in their school library later and remember it, you know, and talk about it. They might, you know, be able to sit with a friend in the barber shop or a family member reading with them this book. You know, there's so many ways that they can connect just by simply putting a book, placing it there and saying, hey, this is available to you. It's in your reach. Take advantage of it. Yeah. I really love that initiative and what you're doing. And I just want to say, you know, thank you so much for reaching out. And I can't wait um, to be able to support you in the best way possible, which leads me to my next question. How can the community support your initiative and what you're doing? Great question. Um, one thing I've done since uh, Juneteenth, I really pushed out on social media, the culturally biased brand. Um, on the different uh, social medias, Instagram and Facebook in particular. Um, 
And on those social medias, there are links to our wish list that we have a list of specific books that we know are written by people of color, written by um, renowned authors who are award-winning, who know how to reach children. Um, and these are the books that we have specifically on our wish list. You can order from there. We also have a cash app, um, Culturally Bias, and we also have a PayPal, um, PayPal me, Culturally Bias, as well, that you can donate funds to. Every single dollar goes towards books. Um, today, we're going to be sitting down and tallying up all the donations that we've gotten since June 19th. It's amazing the support that we've already gotten from the community. But like I said before, I want this to be something consistent. I don't want it to be, let's throw a book in a barbershop and never, ever go back to that and touch it again. I want to revisit. I want to make sure each month they're getting a new text that they can start building a collection for these boys because they're going to get bored reading the same book over and over anyway. Mm -hmm. So um, to do that, we need the community support. We need people to just buy the books off the wish list, drop the books off, um, send money, anything. Um, we, we appreciate all types of donations. So you guys heard it. Um, I will make sure that I pin all the comments and pin all the links to the um, platform so that you can see and you can get connected with this wonderful platform. And I'm just so thankful for you um, being a community partner with Teaching for the Culture and the work that you're doing. And I can't wait um, for our organization to continue to support you and see you on your journey as you help. And we're, we're all in. We're all in to help. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you already putting me on this platform and connecting me with teaching for the culture um, is already has put me in a place where people are noticing and are able to really help this initiative. So thank you for that. That's wonderful. I'm glad to hear that. And so thank you guys for tuning in to teaching for the culture. And this is your host, Bianca Goolsby. And until next time, peace.